and welcome back to yet another very interesting episode, at least for me very interesting. I got a small package from Mark Ross in Tasmania, Australia. <coughs> He's a guy, he has Asiatic bows, shoots them, shoots some release, but he's an ILF shooter too, you know, this ILF system. Then he thought, I would like to shoot an ILF bow, but with thumb release. But of course, when you get now a right hand riser for ILF, but you want to shoot then right hand, uh, if you get now a left hand riser, that you shoot ILF, but you want to shoot right handed, then the grip doesn't feel as it belongs like this. And then he thought, okay, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So I write a letter. <laughs> so I built one. And this is what he does, did, and does. So she still does. It's too early and I only had one coffee. So on there he writes a very nice information. He packed a set of used limbs in it that I can test this riser. These limbs are rated 35 pounds on a 25 inch long riser, but of course his riser is only 17 inches. So it will be roughly 39 pounds at 28 and 44 pounds at 30 inches. But he thinks that this bow could even do 32 inches. And Brace had then a lot of information, so we simply go through it. So first out of the way, it's of course not a rival or it's not by any means a horse bow. You know, like the Asiatic bows, it's just a tr traditional, modern ILF bow for thumb release. And that's what it is. Not, it's eight o'clock. <laughs> not more, not less. So if you happen to have already ILF limbs and you are in the ILF system and you always wanted to try and shoot your equipment with thumb release, that would be an option. So these are the Ascent Pinnacle. Hmm? But of course now we don't do speed tests and performance tests because it really depends which limbs you put on it. You can get cheap limbs, you can get extremely expensive limbs. So that's why for today the purpose was because he struggles when he shoots with his Asiatic bows, thumb release, the arrow is not always straight and with katra and string twist it takes practice, time and skills. And, and he thought if you have now a thumb shooting center shot bow, which this is, you should be able to shoot the arrow straight away without using katra and all the fancy stuff. And look at this beautiful riser. Huh, this is a nice wood, nice made. And it's, this is, and as, as if he knew my hand, one thing already he told me, so don't start shooting like you would do an Olympic bow. You really need to have a hold on this bow, but I expected that anyway. So that's a pretty bow. Look at this, and it's past center. So you really have a center shot bow with ILF limbs on it. Isn't that cool? And he makes this all by himself. So he is not a big businessman, so he can make maybe one or two of these rises a week. So if you want one, I leave the contact in the description. And then you can write to him and finalize your deals. Look at this. Huh? I mean, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. You know that I'm not a fan of this ILF pose, but if it works and if it gives you a straight shoot shot, why not? A straight shot, why not? Shall we talk about the prices? Yes, we talk about the prices first and then we go shooting. Huh? So I said, uh, first of all, it's always material wise that he gets the wood so he can't make too many of them and the price will be something three four hundred dollars us for the riser it's handmade it's not crafted in china somewhere and a fully fledged bow you can have 
with decent limbs for $5,500. So quite decent for an ILF bow, I would say. And you get something very unique. So even if you're now only three finger shooter, you know, you want to try once thumb release, but you want to use your, the equipment you are used to. There you go. You know, we had once this, this nice bow with carbon limbs from China, which really didn't work because the poundage was not right and nothing was really working. So some people attempt this ILF thing, but not many can make it work. So on the center serving, there is a small knock with string, string. So most probably should use now a stringer, obviously, which I don't have. So I do step through, but don't do this, okay? Don't do this at home, kids. Use a proper stringer. But you know that. So let's see. Oi, 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 oi. It's a... Look at this. So, oi, oi, oi. Brace height, he told me it should be 180 to 200 millimeters. Look at this. And then all of a sudden these limbs are tight and I hope that he adjusted everything. So he makes really all these holes and nuts and bolts that you can adjust your ILF system. Nice. It feels good in the hand. Well, <laughs> Mark, huh? Oh, wait, we shoot some release, oh, but still. Uh, 28 easy, 29, 30. Yeah, look at this. Oh, look at this. Couldn't you build a 25 pound? I did yesterday a video and only shot the snake bow. Oh, you need to really. Pretty. So we have a small uh, fur arrow pass here. But only on the side, not on the bottom. But the crafting is really. Let me just. Hold on. Really need to show you a close up. Look at this. Uh, then the mechanism, the ILF mechanism stuff here, and then look at this nice wood with these, huh? Pretty, pretty made, huh? And then handle-wise, really here, fits snug. Well, the thumb is out of the way, so you don't need any thumb protection. Nice. I believe we can do maybe torque or cut. We see, and now we should. <laughs> so, and what he made, he made some nice first string silences. Oh, ho, ho. that's satisfying. Come and get it. Do, 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 do. Nice. So, let's shoot. I need to check now which arrows might work for this bow. Pretty. Mark, very proud of you. Totally. The first 490 grain, the Tonkin bamboo, I will get them soon in 32 and 36 inches with these horn knocks and the horn tips, because it's just nice. So he made their knocking points, so I should all be fine. Moment of truth. So you hold the bow like you normally would hold it. A little deflection, I guess. Let's see the 465 grain destroyers. They are 32 inches. Whoa. And 330 grain, the ones from Martin Spurry. Holy cow. I want you shoot a few times and you get used to it. <laughs> a group. This is a group like this. Wow, so where you point the arrow goes, obviously and not so much deflection, let's shoot 30 meters. And the thing, of course, when you have a bow like this, arrow weight, five, six grain, no problem. 
So, just in case. Let's see what it does on 30. I shoot the left, this bright circle. <coughs> You saw that. Yeah, that's the wrong arrow, doesn't matter. Lightweight one. Oh, that's the one that was deflected. That was a bad release, so you still need to have a clean release. Yep. Maybe a little too light and a little underspined. Huh? Wow. A bit wobbly, so the destroyers I think they fly nice. Ah, yeah, but you know, a few shots and you have this, uh, oh. and you see relatively close. So once you shoot the same arrows all the time, well, the destroyers again. I shoot now the black circle. Huh? Yep. Let's see. It takes a few shots that you get used to. You need to have your anchor point somewhere. Then it starts working. See that? But they are a bit wobbly. Maybe they are too underspined. Nope. The other destroyers are nice, the white ones, but we see no slow motion. But hey, nothing. No hand shock. Minimum vibration, and you can shoot arrow weight if you want. So raising me for in between the 330 grain, and I think they are five, 400 spine, I forgot now. They're a little too lightweight, so you feel it a little in the hand and they don't fly nice with it. So they're a little, maybe on a spine. This one is 500 spine, 460 grain, it just works, I think, nice. So I will shoot now only the destroyers and I will try maybe different thumb rings. So first we try the Bosu ring from Zakturica. That's my smallest one. That destroyers, 460 grain. Only short distance now to see what the bow will do. Ow. The ring doesn't fit nice today. I, 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 you always need two, three sizes of rings. Look at this. Huh? And I shoot the Sungu, it just came in my mind. I have the Sungu, they have 400 grain, 500 spine, so a little more light, but not as light as the other ones. They feel nice. Oops. See, that happens when the ring doesn't fit properly. But you see the group I shot with the first ones, now the ring doesn't sit anymore. Ow! Something a bit more comfy, the leather thumb ring from Wojtek. Oi. Oi, 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 oi. Yeah, I should tilt the bow maybe, huh? Yep. No rocket science. These are a little lightweight, but they work just fine. Let's see, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, fine. So this one, nice. Let's see how the thumb guard from Elong Arrow works.
me up. Gives you a nice clean release. So you might want to use a thumb ring with this one. Oops. Yep. Let's try shallow hook. Yeah. Oh, it's a little too heavy for me for shallow hook. Don't trust it. But you get the point. And speaking of shallow hook, the Fu Hao ring from UN. Mark Tom. Pretty massive. Let's see if I manage shallow hook. With this one at least, huh? Oh, not full draw yet. Oh, needs a bit practice with this ring. Don't feel overly comfortable. Yeah, but then once you get the hang of it again, you shoot a few arrows with it and then you have the feeling for it. Simply don't always change your equipment. Stick with what works for you. Oh, that was a bad shot, yes, you are. I need to stop now. Ooh, 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 what the heck. So. But you see what you get out of it. So every ring works with it, so it's not a problem. You can shoot a Manchu thumb ring if you want to. Ah, it's not bad. So, ooh, ah, my thumb. So. Let's sum it up. So there you have it, the ILF riser from Mark Ross, the Tasmanian devil. It's really nice. It takes me a while to get used to it because I'm not used to have a center shot bow. So for me, it's always uh, I want to do cutter and stuff like this. With this one, you don't have to. You could, but the bow is relatively heavy and torque. I'm not sure with ILF limbs, I would not torque the bow. So this one is simply for shooting straight. It's like you shoot your normal ILF bow with three fingers or whatever, but simply thumb release and the arrow on the outside of the bow. That's all. Could you use this one left hand? No, not really because the handle is made for your left hand. I know it's always confusing, but you know what I mean. It's nice. You need to find the right arrow. So the destroyers were flying nice with 460 grain. What are we? Rough, roughly 50 pounds, I guess. And. Uh, Sungurus were well, not the bad either, they are 400 grain, but they're a little underspined. So you still need stiff enough arrows that they don't wobble too much. And then the thing works. So there are, I think, 500 spine and they are 600 or both 500. I forgot now. But you still can work then with the tip weight, put a more lightweight tip on it. Then the arrow gets a little stiffer. So you need to fine tune this like you do with your normal ILF bow too. You, see, you really you need to fiddle a little that you find the right arrow length first of all or draw length you want to have and then find the right spine, weight and whatever but you know that. But this bow is well made, this riser is straight so it's, well, it's really solid made. I like it and it looks neat, it looks very nice, nice and polished and when I open the now you don't smell it anymore, but when I open it, you know, the smell of a freshly processed wood is like... <laughs> that's why I could have become a carpenter. But Jesus was already a carpenter, so... What <laughs> really nice. So, I gave you the prices, but it's an individual thing. So I said it's not his business, he simply does it as a hobby. So, if you're interested, write him an email and then simply find your agreements. He makes the strings for you and he, he can give you some decent limbs. If you have ILF limbs, just get the riser. But keep in mind it's 17 inches. So you might want to order the string with it. Or, but simply talk to him. He knows his stuff and he can help you with this. So I have to say I like it. I only need to shoot a little bit more with it that I get used to it. But the handle feels great. So this is really a solid a solid thing and you really need to hold it solid and you don't do that it's not going to work that well let's see bah. 
I'm even without without protector. Who needs protectors, you know? I would not draw 32 inches. Something like 30 inches is fine. So I'll most probably get shorter arrows with it. <sighs> Don't do that. <laughs> I just wanted to say this thing really where you point the arrow goes. I need to get my new Songo arrows. Oh, look at this nice. Oh, this is a nice Robin Hood. Even the knock is still in. Isn't that nice? Huh? So now I have an Atlatl. Should work. A little bit tape around here. <laughs> nice. And I run out of arrows. I need to get some new arrows. So Songo is work really nice with it. Wanted to say, but for me now, without anything, bare shaft, bare, bare thumb, it was working the nicest. So, but enough talking. Thank you very much, uh, Mark, for sending this rise and the limbs to me. It's really interesting. I have, uh, but they are too heavy, the other limbs, so they are pretty decent throw weights, he said. So, I guess 60 pounds or something should be fine. I don't know, but simply write him an email, show him some love. And tell him what amazing things he is doing and if you want one ask him he will make you one pretty nice i i like this idea and then, you know i had last time elong they they have now uh, a mill where they can make cnc aluminium risers and they said simply give us your file and then we make you the riser of your liking and i told him listen you should think about making design your own riser for ILF and some release. And I said, oh, good idea. So I think there's something coming because some people really think about it. If you're used to these bows and all these horse bows look too finicky, too gimmicky and whatever, too toyish for you and you really like to have this flexibility of changing limbs and you can put longbow limbs and recurve limbs and you know, then you have way more versatility. You get one riser, one riser rules them all. And then you have it, you know, and then you see, it's fine. So I, I think it's a good idea. And when you like this craftsmanship and when you like it in wood, then you really get one from those. This is such a pretty, pretty, and I get come with this, all these, this just, the hand just, and then it's there. And with these three fingers, you hold the bow and look here, nice control here. This really well made, really well made. So again, thank you, Mark, for sending this to me interesting more to come i guess i believe and i thank you all for watching have a good day i catch you in the next one